everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to another edition of The Daily here with Andrew Wiebe. I'm Nick Fershaw starting out today with the big news for the New York Red Bulls. They've got a brand new head coach after more than two months of searching. It's Mike Petke, a very familiar face to the franchise, the all-time leader in minutes and games played, and a guy that goes all the way back to the early days of the Metro Stars. Really hard on his sleeve kind of guy, working class hero for those New York Red Bulls fans. This seems like a very good pick for them. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of coaching experience. Two years as an assistant with New York, but you've seen the trend recently in MLS, hiring young guys with pro experience in the league. And we've seen guys have success doing it. Jason Christ, the first, obviously. Ben Olsen, Jay Heaps, guys that are making their way up into that top post and starting to turn things around. Now, the big difference between that trio and Mike Petke is they all walked into rebuilding projects. They had an opportunity to have a, a few years of, of maybe patience from the fan base saying, look, we know know you have a big job to do, continue, make progress. Now, Mike Pecky, they expect trophies. Yeah. Still no trophies there in New York, so we'll see if he can deliver and if he can hold up under that pressure, as well as with all those big-name players there to control in the locker room. Pecky's 36 years old. He turns 37 next week, so that makes him the third youngest coach in MLS right now. Thierry Henry is not much younger, for example, than a guy like Mike Pecky. We'll find out how he does beginning March 3rd. The New York Red Bulls open the MLS season at the Portland Timbers. Next up, some news in the ownership ranks and some surprising news from Real Salt Lake. Turns out Dave Checkets has sold his stake in the club to Delloy Hansen. So now Hansen, the complete owner of Real Salt Lake and Rio Tinto Stadium. You look at Dave Checkets, who is expected to move back to New York City. He's a former NBA exec and the former president of Madison Square Garden. He's a guy who really brought this club to Utah and got the deal done for Rio Tinto Stadium, got them a jersey sponsorship, and maybe most importantly, he's the guy that said Jason Christ is going to be the head coach of RSL. Yeah, a real trailblazer up there in Utah. You talked about Christ. That was a chance that not many people had taken. There's a lot of people that wondered, is this the right move, especially pulling him off the playing field and putting him in the front office. It obviously worked out perfectly for Real Salt Lake. At this point in time, Jason Christ defines that club. They win the MLS Cup in 2009 with him at the helm. Re build the team and also get to that Champions League final in 2010-2011. Did not win that one, but Don Garber said it yesterday. Look, Real Salt Lake it didn't just make a name for themselves in Utah. They helped MLS make a name for themselves globally and certainly regionally with all that success in the CONCACAF Champions League. But it's sad to see him go, but it seems clear that Deloitte Hansen has his team's best interests at heart, and he is going to continue pushing that project even further. Yeah, Dave Checkett's put a lot of stock and a lot of faith in Jason Christ. He was a player at the time, went straight from the playing ranks to the coaches and then in that first year cut guys like Freddie Adu and Jeff Cunningham and built the team really that you see now that has had so much success out there in Sandy. Well, one of the biggest stories of the week, that merger between MLS and the USL Pro. We found out a little bit more on Thursday in a teleconference between some MLS execs and some guys from USL Pro. I'm wondering though, Andrew, fans looking at this from the outside, how quickly are we really going to see dividends paid between this new uh, affiliation? Well, I think you'll start to see the trickle early on. You look at a guy like Bright DK who spent some time last year with the LA Blues and USL Pro. He comes back to Portland. All of a sudden, he's the guy that everybody wanted to be. That big, strong forward up top, the one who can get on the end of things, and he started scoring goals. He even got a call up to the Nigerian national team. You look at this, those are the type of things we'll see immediately. Maybe one or two three, four guys a year that start to make their names and make that jump, or young players getting their start. The hope is, down the line, it becomes even bigger. Teams had three options. They can become an affiliate, or they can just stick in the Reserve League, or they could start their own USL Pro side. So far, nobody has decided to do that USL Pro side, and only four went with the affiliation. So the hope is that it'll continue growing, and then maybe we'll see that next crop of MLS youngsters and fringe players start to really develop and push their way into first-team rosters. You mentioned uh, four of those clubs have affiliations with MLS sides. One is Orlando City, one of the best uh, USL Pro sides around. We spoke to the president of the club, Phil Rollins, on the latest edition of Extra Time Radio on Thursday. He had a lot to say about this new affiliation deal and what it means for Orlando City as an expansion side. An MLS, you can catch the podcast uh, on MLSsoccer.com or iTunes or Stitcher Radio. And I want to also mention Inside the Super Draft, the exclusive series we've had for a couple years on the site. It's back the second episode of this year. I think there's five or six episodes this year. A lot more thorough coverage and comprehensive coverage of the draft. The second episode is up on the site now. Find it on MLSsoccer.com.